Well, welcome to the Boiler Point. We're excited today. We're in Ware Boiler University. Lots of training that's going on. And we thought we'd talk a little bit about the Mod V. Now, the Mod V is something that um, Brian has been a part of. This is Brian Grasap with our parts division. Actually runs all of our parts stuff and boilerwarehouse.com. And we want to talk about the modulating feed water valve today. And the cool thing is Brian came to us and said, let's talk about sizing. I'm like, yeah, we've done a lot of stuff, but we haven't done sizing. So right. I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about it. So yeah, the valve obviously has an application that we built it to suit, right? Okay. Um, the application for this valve um, is really boiler modulating feed. Um, that is not like a huge batch load process where you're really drawing hard on the boiler. Yeah. Um, these valves have actuating times. These actuators have actuating times. Really suiting this valve to the application for which what it's intended. Okay. So I did want to talk a little bit about where does this where does this valve fit in the market? How do you size it? What are the things you need to pay attention to when you're buying or selling these valves? Right. You know, when we talk about boiler feed water valves, there's a certain criteria that you need for for sizing these okay and uh the first thing is the application like i like i talked about these are suitable for uh fire tube or water tube boilers okay. um that's generally where we see the most of them in modulating uh -huh. feet mm -hmm. um operating pressures uh really below 250 psi okay. we don't really want to go over the 250 psi mark okay. why, why is that uh it's the it's the valve uh, uh, Teflon ratings, okay. the seats in the Teflon. Okay. And the valve itself is actually rated for a thousand psi cold working pressure on water. Yeah. But you have Teflon seats that are in these that are about five hundred degree rated. Okay. So when you look at a pressure and temperature chart for water, five hundred degrees is usually way higher than a deaerated temperature. Right. But when you start to get into higher uh, operating pressures, you're usually feeding the boilers at way higher pressure with the pumps. Okay. And the way these valves operate, they could be partially open at times, exposing the seats in certain scenarios to a high flow, high temperature scenario, and it can cause warping when you get up too high in an application. Okay. So you don't want to put these in scenarios where they're partially open and seeing super high, super high temperature flow right, rates. Right, 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 um, you want right. to stay within the, the intended use for, for the valves. Okay. And most of the market, thankfully for us, is 150 PSI and below. Right. Sure. And that's, or even 200 PSI sure. below, 250 below. You know, these are great valves for those applications. What, um, what's the uniqueness of the actual valve itself? What? Right, so the valve is a is a V ported ball valve. Okay. Um, our standard valve is a sixty degree V port. Um, that sixty degree V port was standardized um, based on the the flow conditions that we see at different horsepower ranges um, in the market. Okay. So um, you've got you've got the valve body, the V port. We do offer other sizes of V ports, like 30 degree and other other degrees, depending on the application. Uh -huh. But what we stock the most of is the 60, and that usually covers our ranges, anywhere from a hundred horsepower up to 1500 horsepower boilers. Okay. okay. Um, so very common to cover a whole wide range. Right. right. With the sizes up to inch and a half. Why is the uh, V port valve that's something that you selected? Right. Uh, why did? Why is that? So the V port valve, um, you know, as the valve starts to open, there's, you can picture the inside of that valve um, actually has a cut V that it opens against. So that gives you more precise control as you go up and down throttling that valve. You can really fine tune the amount of water going into the boiler okay. and not over quench the boiler in scenarios sure. and be able to shut it off without overfilling the boiler. Got it. So you want this thing to be able to swing open and close and be within the operating conditions of the boiler for the efficiency of the boiler. Okay. Um, cool. So a little bit more about the valve and the design. Um, we do some things that are a little bit different. I mean, other people sell valves. Um, the, the differences and the nuances that, 
they don't do versus what we do. Um, you know, we've selected a heavy duty valve for one. Yeah. That this Marwin ball valve is like I said, it's a thousand psi rated for cold working pressure. Right. Um, if you hold this valve in your hand, it's built like a tank. Yeah. It's yeah. not a cheap throwaway valve. It's not a you know, something that you would look at and be like, yeah, I'll use that for anything. Yeah. This is a beefy valve. Right. Um, the internals, we we have uh, spring washers and Belleville washers on the stem to be able to hold um, uh, the pressure for re repeatability and to prevent leaking on these valves. These are class six shutoff ball valves. So when they're closed, they're closed. There shouldn't be any leak by. Yeah. Um, the design on our bearings, we're actually supporting the shaft that is operating the valve uh, with two pillow block bearings that can be greased. Okay. They can be maintained. You can yep. grease them and, and prolong the longevity of the, of the valve. Yeah. Um, and it's supported in a way where you don't have any hysteresis or uh, torque in, in the wrong spot on the stems, right, right. which is very important for the longevity. Sure. Um, you know, we talk about hysteresis on burners and right. everything else, but repeatability on valves is very important as well. Absolutely. Um, we've also designed our shafts to be square ended. Uh -huh. So you don't have round ended set screws that you're trying to yeah. um, not let slip. Right. Um, squared machine uh, shaft and linkage arms to make sure that when that thing's supposed to move, it's going to move and it's going to be repeatable. Yeah, right. All right, well, Brian, we actually um, have this valve. There is a need for this valve. Tell me a little bit about the sizing and how you would actually do that. Yeah. So when a customer calls in and we're trying to help them with the selection of this valve, there's a few things that we need to ask to make sure that we're selecting the right valve for that customer. Um, these valves uh, have a ton of options that are engineered specifically for each system. Uh -huh. uh, so one of, the, one of the things that you need to know is what's controlling the valve? Is that a McDonnell Miller 7B switch that's a zero to 135 ohm? Is it a differential pressure transmitter that may be four to 20 milliamp? Um, we need to know that so we select the right actuator. We okay. have options for that. Okay. Um, once we select that actuator, we need to know the flow conditions to make sure that we get enough water in the boiler to keep up with the evaporation rate. Okay. These things are creating steam. We need to be able to get enough water in the boiler to ah. keep up with that steaming rate. Yes. So in order to do that, we need to know what the feed water pump pressure is. Okay. So knowing the feed water pump pressure, knowing what the MAWP of the boiler is, what the operating pressure of the boiler is, that will let us size the CV rating for this valve yep. and say, yes, this will flow enough water to get into the boiler. Right. Uh, we also need to know the temperatures of what the feed water temp is coming in. Yep. You know, most standard deaerators will do 227, 230 degrees. Uh -huh. That's what this is made for. Okay. We can really, you know, just dial in exactly the CV rating that they need yeah. and really make sure that this fits the application for, for what they're going to use it for. Right. So it's really, it's not a one size fit all. Right. No, it's an engineered product. Okay. So in our, our inside sales team is great. Yeah. Um, you know, if you call in and you say, yeah, I need a feed water valve, they'll walk you through the questions. They'll, sure. they'll ask you all those questions to make sure that they get that valve. Yeah. Uh, the right way. Yeah. One thing that's also unique about this valve, it is a directional valve for that class six shutoff. The flow direction does matter. Okay. You need to know, is it flowing left to right or right to left? Sure. So we make sure we put the actuator and valve in the right configuration that when you get it, you can throw it on there and you're not going to have any leaking issues because it was put in backwards. Right, right. So us, we're going to have to ask those True. questions of, well, what's the flow direction on the valve? And right. then we, we can select that. Well, no, that's awesome. Well, I think yeah. in, as anything, I mean, having a resource to be able to find out this information is something so important for all the boiler rooms that are out there. Right. And if you're doing the job and you're needing feed water, you know the guys to call now. Make sure that you like our uh, YouTube channel and we will see you next time on The Boiling Point.